If you're here, chances are that you are familiar with the caged system. You just need some help taking it from simple chord shapes to beautiful and melodic solos. In this video, we are using the caged system as a tool for understanding the relationship between chord shapes and scale shapes, and how to use both to create a beautiful solo using the pentatonic scale, the major scale, and of course, chord shapes. The name caged refers to the five chord shapes that form the basis of the system. C shape, A shape, G shape, E shape and D shape. Those chord shapes are not unique to the chord themselves, meaning I can play a C major chord using all five different shapes. This is a C major in C shape, C major in A shape, C major in G shape, C major in E shape, and C major in D shape. And we can play the C major in C shape one octave higher. We can use these chord shapes as a starting point for building a solo in the key of C major, because inside each chord shape, there is a scale we can use to solo. Let's start with the C major pentatonic scale. Inside this C shape, we have this C major pentatonic shape. I don't play the scale from C to C, instead I like to visualize all the notes available within the position. Now C major in A shape, this is the pentatonic. C major in G shape, this is the pentatonic. C major in E shape, this is the pentatonic. And C major in D shape, this is the pentatonic. And of course, C major in C shape, we can play one octave higher. And this is the pentatonic. Now let's use a backing track to practice those five pentatonic shapes. I'm gonna be looping a C major seventh chord for four bars. The reason why I like to use a C major seven chord is just that I like a much more colorful chord that doesn't change the way we organize the shapes. So you can either use a C major chord or a C major seven chord. Now let's check the example.
Now that's cool, but not really, it's kind of boring. So let's add another chord to the chord progression. Instead of doing four bars of C major seven, we're gonna do one bar of this, and then one bar of F major seven chord, then back to C major seven, and back to the F major seven chord. Now this is when beginners can get confused because they see another chord, in this case the F major, or the F major chord, and they think that maybe they have to reorganize the C major pentatonic scale to fit the F major chord. But in reality, it's all the same thing. Adding a chord to a chord progression doesn't change absolutely anything. We are still using the C major pentatonic scale in the way we organized it. Of course, the F major seventh chord add more color to the chord progression, making the C major pentatonic scale more colorful, but we're still using the same C major pentatonic. Let's play the example. So right now we're using the caged system to identify and visualize the scales in one key, for example, the C major key, which means we can use the scale over a C major chord or over a chord progression in the key of C major, regardless of how many chords are found in the chord progression. Now one cool thing about visualizing the pentatonic scale using the caged system is that we can connect two or more uh, scale shapes. For example, we could connect the scale found in this chord shape as well as this one. So right now we have two shapes, this one. And this one. And the cool thing is that you don't have to learn those shapes right away. You can actually have the diagram right in front of you and start improvising. And you can connect these two shapes. You wanna be as melodic as possible. You don't have to use all the available notes all the time. Instead, just try to come up with short phrases. Let me give you a few examples. Now, of course, I'm not trying to play all the available notes. I'm just trying to be as melodic as possible. Such a nice phrase on the second string, five and three. Then eight and five. And seven. And five again. Now we can repeat the same phrase like this. Again, I'm always switching between this shape and this shape. So I have fret number two and five. Then five, two, five, and seven. So I've changed position again. And then this phrase is entirely played in this box. And then we'll go back to this box. So I'm really connecting both and try to be as melodic as possible.
Now in this example, we play the pentatonic in um, E shape, right? So we start with this phrase. So I'm playing the C major pentatonic, is on the third string, we have fret number 9, 8, 10, and 8 again on the first string. And then I play this phrase on the first string. So on fret 12, and then 10 and 8, and then we change position. So I'm literally playing the pentatonic starting from the fret number 8, then fret number 10 and 8, and this is when I change position and I go to fret number 5. So I have 5, 7, 5, and then I like to play this phrase. So I'm playing two notes, so from, five, from 7 to 9, and then fret number 8 on the second string. You can play this a few times. Back to 7 and 5. And you can always change it up a little bit. I don't really play the same phrase over and over again. Of course, once you feel confident, you can do the same exercise with the major scale, which means we are filling in the gaps between the five notes of the pentatonic scale and the seven notes of the major scale. Now we're not changing anything in the way we organized the scales. So it's still the same, same five shapes, but we are adding two more notes to the pentatonic scale. We're gonna leave out the C major in first position just because we don't wanna play open strings. So we're gonna start with C major in A shape. This is the C major scale. C major in G shape. This is the C major scale. C major in E shape, this is super simple. And C major in D shape. And C major in C shape. Now we can do the same exercise using the major scale. And this is awesome because now we have all the notes available, which means that you can really emphasize um, some of the notes that make these chords so beautiful. For example, the B for the C major seven chord and the E for the F major seven chord. Put the scale diagram right in front of you and use the backing track to practice the C major scale in five positions. Here's the example. This is a great exercise, especially if you want to familiarize yourself with the scale. However, it's still an exercise. We want to make this 
scales musical. We want to create a beautiful solo with it. And so let me show you a bunch of short phrases you can use um, to, you know, play over this lovely chord progression. Let's check it out. Now this is such an interesting phrase, it sounds beautiful and we're really focusing on this B flat. It's such a powerful note. So we're gonna open up with this uh, note, the G on the fourth string, fret number five. Then fret number two on the third string, fret number five. And then we land on this B flat. You can approach this note chromatically if you want. And then we play this uh, arpeggio. We have fret number five, fret number four, fret number three. This is when we change chord. We play the F major seven chord and we really emphasize the C and the A, which is the fifth and the major third of the F major seven chord. So fret five and fret two. And then we forget about the chords, we go 100% melodic, we try to use the scale and the pentatonic scale, the major scale and pentatonic scale. So I'm playing five, three, and five. And then I really just improvise a phrase. Using the pentatonic or the major scale. So in this case, I really, you know, opened up with this bluesy phrase. So pentatonic in E shape, and then. So I play this phrase. Um, of course, this is the major scale, and we play fret number ten, eight, and uh, seven. So again, we land on the B flat, the B natural, which is such a powerful note over the C major chord. And we use the major scale now. So it's seven, eight, 10, seven. And then second string, eight and 10. The main thing is that you understand the concept and the scale and then you can improvise and change it um, all the time. Of course, you wanna have a structure, so keep the same structure, but change a few notes. I hope you enjoy this lesson. Will you take it step by step, guys? Always start with the pentatonic scale because it's the most simple. Start with the backing track using just one chord. Learn everything and then move on to a backing track with two chords or three chords. Make it more colorful, but keep it simple. And then of course, when you feel ready, you can uh, combine the pentatonic scale as well as the major scale uh, so that you can add more color to the solo. And when you really feel ready, you can also visualize the chord shapes and emphasize certain keynotes. So take it step by step. I'm gonna leave you to practice this 
Everything is available on my Patreon page, the backing tracks as well as the tabs. Check it out, enjoy this lesson, and I'll see you next time.